Hello, this is Steve from Steve's Makerspace. Welcome. We are in for a treat today. We are looking at Deep Dream Generator and in particular at the style transfer. These are some of the images that people are making on Deep Dream Generator. Here's a close up of that image. And if we look over here, this is the source image that was used. And here is a style image, a painting. And this is what the machine came up with. Here are some of the images that I've created. So this one is using this panda as the source image, this great wave as the style image, and the machine learning put them together and put the style of the wave together with the image of the panda. Another example, we've got this picture of a woman with a horse, this wispiness smoke, and the style generator created this. So this is pretty cool. It's a lot of fun to play with. We're gonna start by looking at the basics of how to use the website. There are timestamps along the bottom of the video. You can skip to whatever section you wanna to go to. Let's look at the process of making an image. I'll go to generate. Then I can choose a file, either from something I've already used before, or I can choose a new file. Here are subjects I've used before that I've uploaded to Deep Dream Generator. I'll click on this fellow. We'll look at some styles. These are the default styles that the site gives you. And then these are files that I uploaded as my styles. So here's the source image I'm using. Here's the style image I'm using. We'll go to settings. I'm going to do a 0.6 megapixel. We'll do a medium enhancement iterations 0.6. I'm going to explain all of these options later. Uh, style weight 50, style scale 100%. Those are fine and we'll hit generate. It takes maybe 60 seconds or two minutes to generate an image. And here we go. We got an image. It's not as bad as I feared. I thought this would be really bad, but uh, that's kind of interesting. So if I go back to my dreams, we can click on here and you can see here's the original image. Here's the style image and there's the final product. So what is the machine doing in style transfer? I'm going to give you the very nutshell version and I'll give links if you want to look at this further. This is machine learning with a convolutional neural network. It is looking at the source image and basically drawing a sketch of the source image. Then it looks at the style image and it looks for patterns and it has a library of different patterns and it compares the patterns it sees here to the patterns in the library. And then it, it adds up how many patterns it sees. Like it sees all these little tiny wavelets here and it says, okay, there's like 50 of these little wavelets. So that must be important to the style. It looks at the colors of the original image and the source image and compares those two. It also looks at some of the details like this wispiness on the hair it, it thinks oh that's similar to the wispiness of these waves and so you can see it's added wispiness of the waves to the hair but it also didn't have a lot of gray in this picture so it took the color that was closest to this color so the gray is closest to blue it thought so i'll put the blue on the panda that's sort of what it's doing. So let's look at these options. The source image and the style image and pairing those together is gonna to be really important and I'll cover those, that in a little bit. But first we'll look at these options. Resolution, it doesn't really matter what the resolution is as far as how the image is generated. This is just what do you want the size of the final image to be. When you first start off, you won't have access to the 1.2 megapixels option for resolution that's going to come later as you're a member for a longer period of time enhancement you've got none low medium high extra high i'm going to turn off my webcam so you can see this better to explain these options i'm going to give you a couple of examples here are my cows these are the settings i chose and then i'm also going to give you this example of this fellow that i made from this style and these are the settings i used for that in the enhance, 
if I do low enhancement versus extra high enhancement, here's what I get. I get a lot more detail. If you can look these ears in particular, you'll see that it's more like little balls compared to this where it's kind of blurry. You can also see more definition, I think, here in the nose of this cow compared to over here where it's kind of uh, a little softer. The difference in high enhancement is a little harder to tell with this fellow. I think these pictures look pretty similar to each other. Now, iteration boost. So here I've got the iteration boost at 2.0 versus the original at 0.6. And iteration boost is a little bit mysterious to me, but what I think it's doing is basically etching the style more deeply into the picture. So it retains the original image, but the style is added on more. Now it's a little confusing because if you look at this one, this one looks more etched than this one. But remember that the source image for this is this which is kind of very soft lines. So I think what it's doing is making the lines more soft. To be honest, I'm not sure. I'm still figuring out iterations. For style weight, you can go from 10% to 90%. And this means, are you gonna add only a little bit of the style to the original image, or are you gonna add a lot of the style to the original image? So we can see a style weight of 10% only added some style to this. The image looks pretty similar to what it did before, whereas over here you've got plenty of the style added in. And this one, again, wow. It really messed up the picture doing 90% style weight here. Next is style scale, which goes from 40% to 120%. Style scale is kind of how big is your paintbrush or how zoomed in or zoomed out is the style. So remember, this is our original style. Are we gonna make this shape big on the image or are we gonna make this shape small on the image? So here's style scale 100%. The style is pretty large. And here's style scale at only 40%. And so the style is small. For this one, take a look along the edge over here and you see these tiny strokes. So this is taking those Van Gogh strokes and making tiny Van Gogh strokes, whereas over here you've got large Van Gogh strokes. If you just start from the default, these are their default settings, 0.6 megapixels and an iteration boost of 1.0. This is gonna cost you five energy, and the energy, you can scroll down here to uses of energy, and this explains the energy use. When you're doing deep style, the 0.36 megapixels costs you three energy, whereas 0.6 costs you five energy. So it's more expensive. And the iteration boost, you're multiplying the energy times the resolution. So if you use an iteration boost of two and you have 0.6 megapixels, that's gonna do two times five. It'll use two, 10 energy. And then the enhancement for low to medium, it's zero extra energy. And for extra high, it's five extra energy. So your energy is up here. You can see I have possible 35 energy and right now I have 29 energy and this energy is regenerating. So this is how many images can I make say in an hour or a day. So I'll start off the morning at 35 energy. I can make a bunch of simple pictures, small megapixels, small iterations, or I can make a few large pictures, large megapixels, large iterations. When you first start off, you're only going to have 15 energy use. So if you go with their default, which uses up five energy per picture, you're going to only be able to do three pictures and then you're going to have to wait for your energy to regenerate. And it regenerates at a rate of three energy per hour. But if you change your settings to 0.36 megapixels, and change your iteration to 0.6, then you're gonna save energy. You'll only have two energy use for this picture. And the enhancement you can put up to medium because it doesn't cost you any extra to go up to medium. This tip about cheaper rendering I got from Iro Pagus's excellent video. I'm gonna to link to her video in the description. This is really important so you can try plenty of pictures because let me show you all of my 
images and you're going to see that not all of them are good. This one didn't turn out great, it's very blurry. Here's another really blurry one, another one, and this one, and this one. So you're going to have a lot of stinkers. That's just part of the process. So you're going to want to use only two energy when you're making all these stinkers until you find something that seems to work and then you can up your energy use to make a better picture. So what does make for a good picture in general? First off, a extreme close-up is a good idea like these four. A black background is a good idea or a white background. And then pairing your source image with your style image, you see I've got similar colors here. So having some similar colors is important. Here's some other good ones by Quan Chi. You can see she's using a black background. Here are some by Oscar. You can see he's using a white background. Also, here's an example from Oscar where his source image has yellow buildings with purple flowers. His style image has yellow buildings with purple flowers. And so the computer understands how to put these two together. And here's another one from Oscar. His source image is a bridge and some buildings. Uh, his style image is some buildings. And so the computer understands to put the uh, style onto the buildings. If you want a watercolor style, that's pretty easy to use. Just take a watercolor picture and pair it with a photograph and you should get a nice watercolor style. Now, as far as the settings to use, if you've already done your testing and you got a nice image and you want to upgrade it, do either 0.6 megapixels if that's all you can afford, or you can go up to 1.2 megapixels if you get a more advanced account. Enhancement, go as high as you can, extra high. Iterations boost, either a 1 or up to 1.5. Style weight, keep around 50. Style scale, around 80. If you want a deeper dive into making good images, I'm going to have a part two to this video that you can check out that should be out very shortly. If you're looking at other people's stuff, you can click on this plus sign and it will add the style that they use to your library of styles. However, keep in mind that if you want to use any of the output images commercially, you need to have the rights or at least be able to use both the original image that was used and the style image that was used to make your com your combined image. So if I use someone else's style, I don't know if that's free to use, if it's public domain. Uh, I would prefer getting my own styles. There is also, I've been talking about deep style, there is also a thin style, which I don't think anybody uses the thin style. Uh, there's the deep dream, which some people use the deep dream and basically what this is well it it's hard to explain what deep dream is uh let me show you what deep dream is so here's the image that i started with and you don't give it a style image but here's the image it created now brace yourself horrifying isn't it what the deep dream is doing is it's looking for things that it recognizes so you know when you're cloud gazing and you say oh look there's a raccoon in the sky that's what deep dream is doing it starts off looking you know at my beard and it says oh this sort of looks like something i recognize and so maybe it'll put like a little eyeball there and then i'll do another pass and say oh there's an eyeball there let's bake that into something else and eventually you get this horror so that's one fun to do uh try a few times but most people don't bother with that. I'm going to delete it now so that it goes away. If likes are important to you, the best way to get likes are to follow a bunch of people and to like their stuff. And then they're going to wind up following you and liking your stuff. I don't care that much. I only follow a few people that I think are actually doing really good stuff. And I'm more careful about who I'm liking because I want to like what I like. If you look at the latest, this one's really nice. This just came through. So I'll like that one. But there is going to be a lot of not so good stuff in here from the latest. But I do like to visit the latest because the thing is the people who are on top are going to get trending. Uh, so this person has been 
doing this a while, probably. And they probably have lots of followers. Let's see, Dan B. So he's got 842 followers. Uh, so those 842 people are getting him in their feed and they're looking at their feed and checking the, that off. And that's great for Dan, but it doesn't help new people. So I like to look a little bit at the latest so that I can help out the newbies. There are a few sites that do style generation besides Deep Dream Generator, like this Ostagram, but all of them have paled in comparison to Deep Dream Generator, at least as far as being free goes. Maybe if you were willing to pay, uh, then you could compare the other sites and see if they do a better job. Like here's a picture that I made on this site, and this is very nice, but if you look at the how long it takes to generate a free image, it was 102 minutes at one point. Right now it's only uh, 10 minutes. Great. This compared to maybe a minute with Deep Dream Generator. And then there are other sites that only give you maybe two pictures a day that you can do, or they want to put their logo at the bottom of your picture. So there's really no comparison that I've found to Deep Dream Generator. I do recommend that you check out artbreeder.com, which is a very different machine learning program. There are some things it's better at than Deep Dream Generator, but some things that it's worse at, and, and it's just different. I did a video showing off Art Breeder not too long ago, so you're welcome to check that out. I'll have a link to that. There's another one of mine, Lion Image, and this image as a style, and came up with this. If you want to go a little deeper into how to make good images with Deep Dream Generator, check out part two of this video, which should be out shortly. That's going to do it for today's video. If you like this, give it a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. In the comments, if you have some more suggestions about how to use Deep Dream Generator, please leave that in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.